Hey, this is Dan with School of Sheets. We build custom smart sheet solutions. And today I'm going to talk about setting up a project schedule and then rolling up multiple project schedules into one master view of all projects. So I'm going to use the construction schedule with Gantt for the purpose of this demonstration. So let's create that from the solution center here. Give it a second to load. All right. I'm going to take the Gantt view off as we make some basic adjustments to this sheet. First, I'm just going to resize things, make it a little bit more visible. And let's see here. I'm going to remove the percent done. Got to get rid of this conditional formatting rule here. And I'm going to add actually some of my own basic conditional formatting based on the status. Let's see here, anything complete, let's gray out and strike out the entire row. Anything in progress, let's apply some green text. Green means go, and let's just add this to the task name and status, just so it's not a little bit too confusing. Okay, now, Going to get rid of the notes here. And this should suffice for a basic project plan. One more thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to add a couple of column formulas for ancestors and children. I do this all the time, almost every time I have a sheet with hierarchy. And all these do is count the number of ancestors or children in a row, convert it to a column formula, and it becomes um, incredibly useful for a number of reasons, some of which I'm sure I'll end up demonstrating. But for example, you know, if you have multiple project plans and you want to, you know, only see some limited information, you can isolate based on you know the level of hierarchy, which is essentially what these do. So I'm gonna hide these for now. We don't really need them. They more sit in the back end for use later. And let's see here. Normally I would probably automate these statuses based on dates, and that way you can also automate the parents. Um, for this one, it's not really what we're talking about today, so I'm just going to leave these manual and change the start date to today. It's uh, October 8th, and that will be enough for the moment. All right, so let's just call this house one remodel. I'm going to put it here, and I'm going to just make a few of these and make some minor adjustments so that we can work with uh, multiple project plans in a more practical setting. Okay, John is working overtime on this one. Let's just kind of change some of this stuff. Maybe this one started, uh, you know, last month. Something like that. And Shorter. Um, this is a contact column, so what you just saw was this is one of my staff members pop up here. So sometimes that'll happen based on um, the people in your organization and how your contacts are set up. Okay, let's change some of this stuff. Low priority, high priority. All right, and maybe this one you can probably uh, just. Let's just get rid of a few things so there's some differences across the projects. And let's do let's do one more. Let's do house three. Actually just notice something. I'm gonna go back, update this name. And alright, maybe this one is gonna start. November 1st.
I'm just going to use a, a text name here rather than the actual contact. These are not started yet. And maybe it's a newer project, so let's only worry about the first uh, set of information. All right. But in this case, maybe this estimate's really important. This is important. That's not important. Okay. So now, if we go into our browse menu, you can see we have three different project sheets here. And it's very common to want to be able to get some information about all your projects at one time. So I'm going to make a report. Actually, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move these three sheets into a workspace. So I'm going to create a workspace. And this is where I'm going to put all of my house remodel sheets. And the reason for doing this will become clear shortly. All right, so we're creating a report. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference the entire workspace. That's why I just did that. And that is important because as new products are created in this workspace, they will automatically be added to the report. And if you move projects out of this workspace, and when you're done with them, they will fall off of that report. So this will, you know, given the a proper workflow, this will stay up to date. Okay, so now what we do when we're building a report is we specify which columns from the various underlying sheets we want to include. So. I'm not going to use the sheet name yet. The primary column is always going to be included. You can't actually get rid of that. Let's add the status. And all right, we need our start date, end date, and assign to pretty basic project plan. Okay. Can resize. Whoops, I just moved it. Resize these columns as you would like to. Okay, so this is just one big list here. We're gonna use the grouping to make this a little bit more usable. So we're gonna group it by our sheet name, first of all, and that will allow you to collapse and expand individual, individual projects. You could do this for each of these kind of individual buckets here that would require um, adding in some, probably some custom formulas to allow for it. It would actually be reasonably advanced to do so, I'd say. Um, but at this moment, you know, this is kind of a basic example of how you can get your projects all together in one view. You can add filter criteria. You might for ease of use, just want to see anything where the status is not complete. So all of your completed stuff off the report, and that could apply to your uh, other hierarchy rows as well. So as people go through and get their stuff done, you'd see a list of either you know what's currently being done or what's yet to occur. And importantly, um, like I said, as you add more projects, they will go onto this report. So if we make a new one of these, house four, and this one's gonna start here. we go back to our report, it will appear in this list. So it happens automatically. Now, let's say that we have, for whatever reason, people want to see uh, all the different tasks regardless of status. So house one, we are way ahead of schedule and 
it is all completed. Okay, so another way that this works is if we are to remove house one, perhaps you might have an archive workspace to maintain your data, or you might straight up delete it. Wouldn't recommend that, but you know, to each their own. Now house one falls off the list. One last thing I'll show you is, let's say we add our priority here. Okay, so now that we have priority, we could um, make a version of this report which only shows our high priority tasks. So anything that you want to be able to really keep an eye on, this could give you a condensed view. I'm gonna turn this off though. Okay, so now that we have a master project plan and a few project sheets, let's make a projects overview dashboard. So, our title, awesome construction code, projects overview dashboard. Okay. Gonna resize my screen a little bit so we can keep better track of everything. Let's choose some nice professional looking colors. Resize this a little bit. All right. So what I'm gonna do is add our house read model report here so that we can see it. And when you click it, we're going to open the data source. So we're going to open the report itself. Okay, so this is, you know, everything that we have in here. We can do just some basic formatting. And it's actually really quick once you set this up to make new versions of your report. So let's make one, um, let's make a version of this high priority tasks. So we save this new Priority is one of high, all right. And now what we can do, open our recents, get back to the dashboard, edit this guy. Let's put our high priority tasks first. So we can the data source from that. We expect this to be smaller. This is high priority, so let's use a attention grabbing, but not overly distracting color. Light orange, I think, will do which is just fine. Gotta kind of work with the uh, dashboard editor here to drag stuff up without really. Okay. Perfect. All right, this is a really uh, obviously basic dashboard. You could add some, you know, different KPIs from your projects, financial overview, if you were capturing budgetary information, all that good stuff. Uh, but in this particular case, we're just gonna have a high priority task, has the model of master report with all of our projects. If you click one, you get to go to the underlying data. And this one, you can toggle them on and off. And importantly, as you actually complete your tasks, if you save it in your report, that was for 
I just did that for house four for a model. If we go to the actual source sheet, these items are now marked as complete. The reports and the sheets are fully linked. So that's going to conclude today's video on um, just some basic project portfolio reporting. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button. Consider subscribing for more Smartsheet educational tutorial content. Leave a comment below if you have any questions, and maybe I'll make a video for you next. Uh, finally, if you are interested in getting some hands-on help with Smartsheet, you can fill out our new client interest form to get in touch with us. Uh, we're a full-service Smartsheet consulting firm, so if you have a professional need for some assistance, we can be of service there. Thanks so much and have a great day.